happy Halloween month. And if you've watched the show for a while, you know that I love me some horror. Though most of our stuff is action, sci-fi, and comedy, horror is one of my biggest passions. So this month, we're gonna be diving into some fun horror ideas like the monster you just saw or lighting a horror scene. But today, we're looking at how we pulled off this monster look for $37, and that all started at the Halloween store. Which these pop-up Halloween stores are the best thing about this time of year. It's basically a prop store, and if you wait until after Halloween, everything goes on sale, so you can get props, blood, and makeup for even cheaper. But we walked through the store looking for something that popped out at us and finally found this mask. Pretty great looking off the bat and only $37, so we grabbed it knowing we could make it look even better with lighting and a few other tricks. After that came wardrobe. We had to cover our actor's entire body since we didn't want to spend any more money for any extra parts. So we decided it would be interesting and creepy to have him in a suit. We used this old suit that we held onto and that's something to point out actually. I never get rid of interesting clothing like this. I always throw it into a container knowing that someday I'll probably use it for wardrobe. And this suit is about eight years old. Just made it a part of our wardrobe collection and it's already distressed and dirty from past uses, so it was good to go right away. Then we just threw some black gloves on our actor so you couldn't see his hands, and that was it. We have our creature. Next is how we lit it, and it's horror, so of course we're gonna light it dark, which is gonna help us out a lot. The more contrasty and dark you can get with a mask like this, the more it's gonna work on camera. So I threw a Lyra from ICANN in the bathroom next to him with a quarter green on it to give it a gross green pale color. Then we taped a flex light to the ceiling, gelled with a slight yellow. Then in the back room behind him, I had a Luxly timpani. This is a one by one RGB light from Luxly, so I could dial in any color I wanted. And I went with a deep red and I let that spill out the door so it would reflect onto the walls, creating this ominous red surrounding our character. Then I grabbed another Lyra light and pointed it at the ceiling in the back to bring up a little ambience. And finally, one more light from Luxly. This one is the cello and just like the timpani, this is an RGB light, which these things can dim all the way down to zero. So I could set this very low to get a slight fill on our creature, again in a pale greenish tone. Finally, we threw on some haze, filled up the room to give it extra weight to the scene. And without the haze, it still looks good, but the haze catches the light and ties everything together in a very filmic way. Now, knowing how things go, there's inevitably going to be complaints talking about the lights that we used and the hazer. But although these tools do make it easier to get this look quickly, you can absolutely do the exact same thing without it. And we've done tons of episodes showing methods to accomplish these sort of effects for much cheaper or in a total DIY way, including painting bulbs instead of using gels, a cheap spray haze that will get the same look, and so on. So check the notes below for some links to those episodes. But the final thing we did while shooting was to wet the mask. I wanted it to have an off-putting, dripping look to it, but I would have given it that wet look either way to try to keep it from looking rubbery. So I took a spray bottle, filled it with water and baby oil, which is exactly exactly how we handle it when we want an actor to look sweaty on camera as well. Then we soaked it down between takes. Now we have this great glistening and interaction with the mask. I also considered coating it in Vaseline and adding blood around the mouth in other areas, but that didn't end up being the look that I wanted. It would be a great way to give more life and believability to a mask like this though. So we have a great look going right in camera. And if you shoot it right, this works as is, but we took it even further with some work on it in post. The biggest thing that really gave this mask life was the blinking we added in post. And of course, all of that was added in After Effects by Ryan Thompson, the glowing eyes and the blinking and the mouth and eyebrow movements. And all of this really pushed it toward a feeling of a living, breathing thing. For instance, here's the shot without those add-ons. It still works, but when we shift over to the shot with those extras in, it really starts to come to life and stacks on the creepy. Now, I'm not gonna get into tutorials on how we did all that this week, but we will be covering all those extras in next week's episode, along with more monster goodies. And the final thing is sound. Adding in some unnerving sounds in his close-up helped bring it all together as well. I added this tension, creaking, popping sound as he lifted his head. Mixed with some subtle growling sounds. That mixed with the soundtrack to create the whole moment. But that's it, a monster for $37. So now let's take a break to recoup our money. Thank you.
Domain.com has all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names and intuitive website builders to take the first step in creating an identity online. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and has the tools you need to build a website so you can start sharing your ideas with the world. And no domain extension is going to help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain.com has over 300 domain name extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space. Of course, they're showing you love by giving you 15% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at Domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Logo. Another piece of trickery in this short was this right here. The replicating corridors was a way to tack on some oddness to enhance the moment and lead to that potential jump scare. And it was super simple. We pulled this off just by using a whip pan. So Josh started by looking down our main corridor with us over his left shoulder. Then I panned away to the actual corridor on the other side with nothing there, landing on his other shoulder. Then we switched positions. Now with him facing the opposite direction and with me over his left shoulder, then we turn back to the main corridor and I pan with him landing on his right shoulder. Now in post, all I have to do is cut between between these two shots on the move at a slight crossfade and there we go. And to do the final pan back, we did the exact same thing. We just held on that shot and panned back and repositioned to land on the final close up of our creature. Which if you look, you'll see that Thompson added a slight smile on the creature right at that moment. You can hardly catch it, but it's there and subconsciously does a lot. But there you have it, $37, some old clothes, and three hours later, and we had our monster. And I love this sort of approach, where you take simple things and craft horror out of it. There's a lot of very talented people online doing things like this, like David Sandberg, who's now doing massive things. But if you check out his channel, you'll see that he started very DIY, using creativity to make things happen. Another filmmaker that you should absolutely check out is Danny Donahue. He has a great YouTube channel with a bunch of solid horror short films and behind the scenes looks at how he goes about making them. And I love and really Relate to his approach completely. He's all about getting it done. Using whatever resources he has and his creativity, he's been able to make some solid shorts with a lot of scares and great creatures. One of my favorite behind the scenes is what he did for his 17 second short, Stay Dead. In this, he showed how he used a stick, a hanger, and a bed sheet to create some pretty creepy creatures. He also uses the same blinking effect for a mask that we use today, which you can find in his short, The Moonlight Man. So if you dig horror and indie do-it-yourself goodness, definitely check out Danny's channel, which I will also link below. And that's it for today. If you dug the episode, like, share, subscribe, tell your mother about it. And I'll see you next week when my dead friend keeps showing up looking more and more dead each time. Oh.